Hello everyone and welcome to The Student Voice. I'm Sam Applebaum and today we are pleased to have New Jersey's 11th District Congressman. He is the recipient of the 2013 Navy Distinguished Public Service Medal, veteran of the Vietnam War, recipient of the Vietnam Service Medal, and notable and renowned philanthropist, Congressman Freelandheisen. Welcome to the show, sir. We're pleased to have you here today. Sam, it's great to be here at Wayne Hills High School with you. So, Congressman, tell me, what do you believe is the most pressing issue in New Jersey right now? I think the most pressing issue is uh, jobs in the economy. Uh, New Jersey has a higher unemployment rate than, than most states, so as members of Congress, and, and I represent uh, Wayne in Congress, the thing I am concerned about the most is making sure that people keep the jobs they have and young people when they're graduating from college that they have an opportunity for good jobs themselves. So jobs in the economy and those types of opportunities are absolutely critical. Right. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, you're, this is your 10th term, correct? As it is, yes. What role do you believe incumbency plays in re-election? Do you believe that it's a fair role? Well, it, it, it's nice to be re-elected uh, through the voice of, and the vote of the people uh, every two years as members of the House of Representatives are. And an incumbency works uh, uh, for New Jersey because the, the longer you're in Congress, uh, you uh, uh, climb the ladders of different committees. And I chair the, the House Committee on Defense Appropriations, which is money for, for our military, the men and women who serve us. So actually, there's some value in being an incumbent, and it helps the state of New Jersey. So in some ways, it's a, a, a home run for New Jersey to have incumbents. Yeah, for people to have that familiar face who they know and who they trust already, correct? Yes, they, they do, and, and I'm, I'm relatively new to Wayne, having represented other parts sure. of uh, mostly Morris County, some, mm -hmm. to some extent Somerset, Sussex, and Essex County. So it, it's great to be here to answer any questions you have. Do you believe, as a representative, you play a role as a delegate or a trustee? Well, to, I, as I understand the question, uh, sometimes, uh, first of all, members of Congress, the men and women I serve with, we vote our conscience, uh, we vote our congressional district, I, I represent New Jersey, northern New Jersey, so, and uh, certainly uh, I, I always uh, look after the needs of New Jersey first and, and on issues that may have some degree of uh, controversy, uh, I vote my conscience the way I was brought up. So what do you do if you run into a situation where the people overwhelmingly want one thing, but you truly believe that something else is right? Will you vote what you want? Well, I, what one thing as a member of Congress, you're, you're always out there listening. Uh, I represent 730,000 people. Right. I hear from um, you know, tens of thousands of people who write me and call me each year. And so if, there's, if, are there, if there are issues, you listen. And, uh, and uh, I think, generally speaking, if the overwhelming number of people who feel strongly about the issue, I'm, I'm probably with them. Mm -hmm. But on certain issues, perhaps I might not be. When you were first elected, what was the main thing that you wanted to do in office, your main goal? Well, my, I think my main goal uh, back in, uh, when I was elected ran for, for Congress in 1994. And prior to that, I served in Trenton in the state legislature. And prior to that, I served as a, as a county freeholder. I think that the, the task of serving, to, serving the people, looking after their needs, looking after New Jersey families, fighting for New Jersey, for New Jerseyans, things that are important in terms of jobs and opportunities, that hasn't changed over the 20 years that I've had the honor of, of representing New Jersey in the United States Congress. And do you feel that you've achieved this goal, do you, or do you feel there's still more that you need to do? Yes, I th you, 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 you never achieve the, the, we, we, we live in a, in a world of greater complexity, right. a lot more in the way of technology. So uh, you're always working towards the goal of, of trying to get people to have good jobs, good education, uh, good opportunities. And do you have any new plans? What are you currently working on that's occupying most of your time? Well, I, I chair, for the first time in the history of New Jersey, the, the committee that uh, funds the, the uh, Department of Defense, which means every man or woman who serves in the military, their family, uh, whether they serve in the regular military, guard and reserve, whether they serve in Afghanistan or Iraq. Um, my job is to make sure that they have the tools to, uh, to protect us and to do their work around the world. Sure. Thank you, Congressman. Stick around because when we come back from our break, 
Our next host, Matthew Ferraro, will ask for some advice from the congressman. Folks, welcome to the North One Group Three State Semifinal between your Wayne Hills Patriots and the Golden Knights of Old Depend. <laughs> the fans getting a cheer going here against Old Depend. Oh, and and knocked down in the goalie box is a Wayne Hills player. Here's the kick, and it's good. Marcello Minucci gets the game-winning kick, penalty kick, to take Wayne Hills to the state finals. Hello everyone, Matthew Ferrara here. I'm here with Congressman Freelandheisen, and today we're going to be talking about his political career. So Congressman, you have to tell me, what is the campaign trail like? Is it a challenging one? I know it's much bigger scale than the local ones like a mayor or something. Well, when you r represent 54 towns, and of course uh, the township of Wayne is the largest <laughs> in my uh, congressional district with uh, 27 square miles, uh, y y you have to be very active. So I'm, I'm active even when I'm not running for re-election. I'm around my congressional district visiting uh, over 90 schools, uh, speaking to rotaries and Kiwanis. I'm on my way uh, this evening to uh, uh, a Lions Club uh, event uh, in Wayne, so it, it's it's not campaigning in the traditional manner, but I, I'm out there all, all the time meeting my constituents, listening to my constituents. You find that tiring at any point? Or just well, I, you, you get used to it. Yeah. And uh, as, you, as you are aware, in Maine, uh, here in Wayne, you have, what, six or seven diners, so I, I, I've been to all your diners, I've met all your diner owners. You got the late night coffee runs? Yeah, well, not only late night, but uh, early morning yeah. runs and you, you meet so many people. Uh, uh, I, I visit uh, uh, businesses here in Wayne. You have a very active business community. Uh, you have a, some great schools here. So I, I get around uh, Wayne and, and I, I like to campaign, but I do it. It's just part of my job as a member of Congress. Just comes along with it. So uh, my next question is, what advice would you give someone who's interested in a career in politics like myself? Well, uh, y you can volunteer for a man w or a woman running for public office right here in the township. There's always, every year in, in New Jersey, there are p uh, y uh, men and women running for re-election, for election for the first time. They're always looking for volunteers. So actually you can volunteer from the time you're 11 or 12 and help other people achieve their political and campaign objectives. So that's a pretty good way to get involved. Besides, obviously, if you go to college, you, you, you could major in political science, although I think English might be a pretty good major as well. <laughs> um, well, when you were starting off at a young age, what was the best thing that you found further to your political career? Well, work, working for other people. Mm -hmm. and, and in politics, uh, youth is not a barrier, and, and it's a very friendly, open, uh, opportunity for, for people sort of to get around and go into shopping centers and into stores and go into the train stations and bus stations in the morning and, and meeting people. And, uh, and there's usually somebody running for office and mm -hmm. they're, they're always looking for a hand and age is no barrier. So it's, it's quite easy to get involved, stuffing envelopes, making telephone calls. So there's a, there's a campaign always going on in New Jersey. Did you find uh, climbing the political ladder at first like a long and hard process, or if you paid your dues and did it correctly and worked hard, you got stuff done? Well, I think uh, I, I did climb the ladder. I started when I got out of the Army. Uh, I, I worked for other uh, elected officials, then I ran to be a, a county elected official, a county freeholder in neighboring Morris County, and then I think I did a good job there helping others and, and helping myself and then I went to, down to Trenton for, for um, uh, 11 years and then I, I've been in Congress now for longer than you've been alive <laughs> as a member of Congress. So it's a great honor to have the job. That's excellent. My next question is, do you have a good relationship with the reps from all over the country, from other states that you work with frequently in Washington? Yes. It, it, the, first of all, you've got a r remarkable group of 435 men and women, yeah. all of them very passionate about serving their state and their congressional district. And uh, first of all, we're, we're friends before we're partisans. So while we have a, 
you know, a division between Republicans and Democrats were, were all there from around the nation to, to, to work together. And that's primarily, certainly that's why I'm there. Do you ever find yourself disagreeing with uh, friends in the Congress that are either on the same political side as you or as a rival political side? Yes, uh, we, we have a big nation, so yeah. it, it's more than just the East Coast and West Coast. Yeah. A, lot of the Ameri a lot of America's b b between California and New York and New Jersey. So it, it, it's not so p uh, partisan between Republicans and Democrats. It's often other parts of the country that thinks that uh, maybe uh, the West Coast or East Coast is, is uh, taking advantage of them. And my final question, how would you say that your political career has uh, shaped you as a person and would you do it all again? I, I, I would do it again. It, it's, I, I've always wanted to be involved in politics. I come from a very political uh, family. My father was, a, was elected to be a member of Congress in 1952, so oh. I know that sounds like a hundred years ago, but in reality it uh, shaped my my aspirations and my desire to, to serve people. That's awesome. I will thank you so much. Well, thank you, Matthew. All right, next come back and see Anthony De Janeiro talk to a uh, congressman here about his line in duty. <laughs> oh, hey, I didn't see you there. If you would answer this question at random, what are the chances that it'll be correct? A, 25%, B, 50%, C, 25%, or D, 60%? The correct answer is, there is no correct answer. If you think you're right, you're wrong. Hey everyone, welcome back to the Student Voice. I'm here with Joe DiDonato, who has a question for Congressman Freelandheisen. Joe? What kind of experience did you receive being in the 93rd Engineering Battalion? Hello and welcome back everybody. I'm Anthony DiGennaro and I'm here with Congressman Freelandheisen. So Congressman, you just heard our, uh, one of our questions from uh, one of our students. What do you make of it? Well, for, first of all, I, I was drafted into the Army, and, and I, I, I don't regret that one bit because it's, I think, serving your country, going through basic training, serving with other, uh, other men as I did, uh, ended up in Vietnam, was, uh, gave me an experience and appreciation of what uh, military families, uh, men and women who volunteer today, what they go through in terms of their sacrifice. Of course, of course. So, um, you come back from Vietnam, and you're, uh, you've autom you're automatically elected the Morris County Freeholder by uh, Dean Gallo. What do you make of it? Were you surprised, overwhelmed? How do you feel? About, how did you feel about that? Well, when, it, when I got back, I wasn't uh, elected immediately. Oh. I actually worked for the county government, the Morris oh, County okay. Freeholders, uh, for about a year and a half. And then I decided I knew enough about what county government was all about. And with the support from then Freeholder, uh, Dean Gallo, who became a member of Congress prior to me, uh, I uh, started my political career by running for county freeholder for a three-year term. Now, would you say that gave you a lot of experience when you uh, finally got elected into the House of Representatives? A absolutely. No, I think if you've served, as I did in the state legislature, as a, a member of the New Jersey Assembly, served as a county freeholder, whether it be in Passaic, but I served in Morris County, it, it gives you experience, institutional memory, it gives you a lot of contacts and appreciation for, for what the needs of the people are. I'm sure. So uh, what did you learn from your father about having a place in the House of Representatives? Did he give you any advice, any, um, any sort of you know, push along to um, when you got elected? Well, my, 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 father, uh, I, my father certainly to, to a great extent was my hero and role model. And I always volunteered when my father was you know, out on the hustings or was going out to a dinner or a picnic or a parade, I, I was the child who volunteered. So to some extent, uh, I always wanted to do what he did. But I'm one of five children, and I was perhaps the one that was most interested in what my father did for a living. Right. Okay. So uh, tell us about your time at Fort, uh, Fort Dix. Uh, what was your first reaction when you were drafted? Well, for, first of all, when you, when you are drafted, uh, you're, you're conscripted. It, it's, it's something which, to some extent, is involuntary. So I went to Newark. They cut your hair. They send you <laughs> down to Fort Dix, and you grind it out for uh, four or five months in what's called basic training. Right which means that the military takes uh, young men back then, young men from all sorts of walks of life, some high school, some college educated, and I'd graduated from college, and forms them into the military. And that means uh, making sure that uh, they look after their brothers 
when they're serving wherever they might be serving. And as it turned out, I ended up spending a year in Vietnam. Wow. Uh, what, now, what was your reaction when you got drafted? Were you overwhelmed, surprised? What was, what was going through your head at that time? Well, it was a very unpopular war, right. the Vietnam War. So nobody, everybody hated the war. And, and most of us who served in Vietnam, people had generally pretty unkind things to say about the war, and most of us. So when we were there and when, when I came back, uh, we, we, there, there wasn't a lot of appreciation shown. Thank goodness today, those who serve in the military, we appreciate their service and sacrifice oh, more. Of course, of course. So uh, your mother, she was an heir to the Procter & Gamble fortune. Uh, how did that affect you growing up? Well, th th this, is a, this is a family tie that goes back over 150 years. So I, I, you'd have to use the term lightly. <laughs> so, uh, you know, it's not a, I'm not an immediate uh, heir, uh, heir, but in reality, it's about three or four generations. So wow. I, I'm proud of the, the, uh, of the relationship. And certainly, if you look at our lives, just about everything we, we use as consumers either starts with t uh, soap or toothpaste. So you can't, <laughs> can't get around it. Okay. Uh, and your father was, also, uh, I believe, an heir to the Ballantyne, uh, the brewery? Well, uh, in the old days, uh, New Jersey had more breweries, mostly in, in Newark. And, uh, and there, there was the Ballantine Ale, which was a very famous brand. And uh, uh, he inherited it because it went bankrupt. So it wasn't exactly a, an inheritance with a large payoff. All right. Well, thank you, Congressman. Well, thank you, being Anthony. Here. Good luck to you. Nice to meet you. Thank you. Uh, that's some really fascinating stuff, Congressman. So don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with our final anchor, uh, Ellie McNeil. Hello there, Hobbit fans. Who is the main character in The Hobbit? Is it A? Bilbo Baggins, B, Gandalf the Grey, C, Smog, or is it D, Thorin? If you guessed D, Thorin, you'd be incorrect because it's A, Bilbo Baggins. Hey everyone, welcome back to the Student Voice. I'm standing here with Carly Pillay who has a question for Congressman Freelandheisen. Carly? Congressman, what role do you play in the New Jersey school system? Hi, welcome back to the Student Voice. I'm Ellie McNeil. Congressman, you just heard from one of our students. What do you have to say? Well, uh, public education uh, in large part is, is run and funded by the state of New Jersey, but the, the federal government obviously is, is involved through uh, uh, issues relating to special education and bilingual education. So uh, as somebody who visits about 90 schools a year, I, I see firsthand the, the value of our schools and how well educated um, all of my, most of my constituents are. Was your ultimate goal always to be a congressman? Actually, it was. I <laughs> suppose if you were to interview other men and women who, who sought political life, my father was a member of Congress when I was growing up for, for 22 years, and I was, I'm one of five children. And even though I'm an adult today, I always wanted to do what he did for a living. What was your favorite subject um, in high school? Uh, I, I loved history. <laughs> I, I was a history major in, in college. But if I had to do it all over again, and forgive me, social st uh, uh, studies teachers, I'd probably be an English major <laughs> because I love to read. I believe in literacy, and I think the, that helps the, in the whole issue of how do you communicate besides listening to your constituents. How much time do you spend in New Jersey? I'm, I come back every uh, weekend to get out of Washington. Washington is an exciting place to, to be during the week, but in reality, I come home uh, every weekend go to a lot of pancake breakfasts, <laughs> spaghetti dinners. We have our first grandchild, uh, our granddaughter, so I'm thrilled to, to be with her. So I'm, I'm home, busy every weekend. So you spend the week in D.C.? I'm in, I'm in Washington, usually Monday nights, just like high school. We get out at 2 o'clock on, on Fridays, although I'm, I'm, I'm here today in Wayne Hills. <laughs> but normally, I come back on Friday afternoon. What's an average day in D.C. like? Average day in D.C., I usually get up about uh, 6 o'clock. I, I do uh, some exercise. I go to two or three breakfasts, not necessarily <laughs> to eat, but to meet with constituents who have issues. And then I have uh, public hearings. I have uh, school visits coming uh, down to see me in Washington. What are your main legislative objectives? Uh, my, I, I chair the committee that looks after all of our military. So anybody serving it here at home or abroad, Afghanistan or Iraq or Korea, it's my job to make sure that those men and women have the best equipped and that they're uh, the best equipment possible. 
and that their families are looked after. How long have you been on um, the committee? I've, I've been on the what's called the House Appropriations Committee. That's the committee that deals mm -hmm. with the money, the spending of uh, income tax mm -hmm. money. I've been on that committee since the, the, the first time uh, I got to Congress 20 years ago. Oh, wow. Um, so what are your political goals for the upcoming year? Well, I, my, my goals as a member of Congress is to look after the needs of the 730,000 people I represent, <laughs> from always. the oldest to the younger. So I, they're not really political goals, but certainly uh, I think getting people back to work, jobs and opportunities, that, that's really what my primary job is. A lot of people are out of work and a, a lot of people need a, a, a lift up. Thank you all for joining us on another episode of The Student Voice. We hope you all enjoyed this very special episode. Thank you, Congressman, for joining us, and thank you, viewers, for watching yet again. See you next time on The Student Voice. I'm Ellen McNeil.